Did you know that Canon introduced the world to eye control focus back in 1992? In this video, I'm going to discuss the Canon EOS A2E, the world's first camera that let the user select the focusing point simply by looking at it. The Canon EOS A2E, called the EOS 5 in European markets, was a prosumer SLR that had a slew of advanced features, including an excellent five-point autofocus system, a variety of exposure modes, including program, shutter, aperture priority, manual, portrait, landscape, sports mode, and more, a large built-in flash with a 28 to 80 millimeter automatic zoom, one 200 flash sync, one 8,000th shutter speed, 16 custom functions, including high-speed film rewind, back button autofocus, mirror lockup, and the ability to leave the film leader out, a feature that I always loved because I developed my own film. The A2E was one of Canon's cameras that helped codify their design language, and in operation, it's actually very similar to the 5D series. It features the same command dial, main dial, and rear wheel, a testament to Canon's enduring great design. If all of this wasn't enough, the camera was the first camera in the world to introduce eye-controlled focus, although it could be purchased without that feature included. In the lineup, the A2 series was positioned just under Canon's EOS 1 series workhorses and marketed as a semi-professional model. The A2 quickly gained popularity with pros, however, because of its robust feature set, excellent handling, and reliability. Although the camera is made mostly of plastic, it proved itself as extremely well-built and able to handle a variety of shooting situations. Now, I've owned my A2E since 1998, and it still works flawlessly. When the optional VG10 vertical grip was attached, it not only gave the user a vertical shutter button, main dial, AF selector button, and custom button, but it also made the ergonomics of the camera really, really nice. And it resulted in one of what I think was one of the best looking cameras of the period. Now, not to be confused with eye tracking focus in modern digital cameras, eye control focus let the user select one of the five horizontally positioned focusing points by looking at one and then tapping the shutter button halfway. And this system was revolutionary for the 1990s, but it did have mixed results depending on the specific person's eye. Now, it always worked well for me, however, and even when I dusted off my A2E and shot rolls of film for this retrospective, I was really pleasantly surprised with its accuracy, which, although not perfect, work most of the time. In the A2E, this feature only worked in landscape mode, however, so taking vertical shots had to be done the old-fashioned way by manually selecting a focusing point or by letting the camera decide. Eye control focus quickly reached its apex in the EOS 3, which I also owned, but regretfully, I sold many years ago. Unfortunately, eye control was a short-lived feature and disappeared altogether not long after the EOS 3. And although I don't know the official reason why Canon and stop this feature, I would guess it was due to the inconsistency that they had from one user to the next. The ergonomics and handling of the A2E are exemplary, especially for a near 30 year old camera. As I mentioned, the layout is really very similar to the 5D series. And if you look at the camera side by side, you can see how closely Canon has stayed true to their design language throughout the years. The grip on the camera is one of the best parts because it's large, deep, and very comfortable. The vertical grip has the same level of comfort and support, and the buttons are well-placed, which make the camera easy to use in either portrait or landscape orientation. Dialing in the correct exposure is easy via the main dial and rear control wheel. The viewfinder is large and bright, and overall, the buttons and dials seem right where they should be, which made using the camera after many years really enjoyable. The A2E is not a small camera, and one thing that surprised me was how bulky it seemed to me now. Even without the vertical grip, the camera is pretty chunky, and it has a decent heft to it, especially for something that is more or less made of plastic. It's not overly heavy for sure, but the size and weight are noticeable if you carry it around for a day of shooting. 
The large built-in flash also means that the top of the camera protrudes forward quite a bit and it has a sort of angular design unlike most of Canon's other high-end models. But I always found this shape to add to the charm and kind of the cool look of the camera. For this video I tested the A2E with a 50mm 1.4 lens and I found the focusing overall to be pretty fast and accurate. There were a few times where the images I thought were locked into focus came out slightly blurry though. Since one feature the camera is missing is a diopter, it was a little tough for me to tell if I was completely locked in focus in a few different shooting situations. One other weird little quirk about the camera is that every so often it would take an additional sort of split second for the camera to fire. Now at first I thought there was something wrong with the camera but then I realized that it hadn't achieved focus and it was still in the process of locking onto the subject. So this happened to me a handful of times and it was a little frustrating. Besides the autofocus, one thing that I really enjoyed about using the A2E again is how fast it is to dial in settings. Changing from one mode to another is easy and quick and adjusting the aperture and shutter speed is as simple as it is on a modern Canon camera. Dialing in settings was intuitive and fun with the main hindrance being the simple plus minus exposure meter that lacks a proper scale. I shot two rolls of film with the A2E, Fuji Superior 400 and Ilford XP2 Super 400. I then had the negatives developed and scanned at my local camera store and I was quickly reminded of how incredibly spoiled we are with high resolution digital cameras when it comes to image quality. However, the results are very, very pleasing and they have that certain film look that's very desirable and people are emulating now. The images are contrasty with muted colors and they have just enough grain to make them look sort of cool and vintage. I also used the fill flash for a portrait of my wife and the camera metered that situation very nicely. Although I'm becoming more invested in shooting film, I'm not yet at the point of investing in a high resolution film scanner. So I would imagine that if I purchased a good scanner, I would see a noticeable difference in the quality of the scans. But as I said, I'm not there yet, especially since the cost of using a camera like this is already pretty darn high, as I'm gonna tell you about in a minute. Now, I always love the vertical grip on the A2E. It's small, it's light, and it looks great on the camera without seeming like an afterthought like many of the grips offer. And do. Part of the reason why it's so light and small is that it doesn't contain a battery compartment, which obviously was a compromise when it comes to battery life, but what was lost in battery life was gained in size and usability. And I always thought that the sharp angle of the grip on the non-shutter side of the camera was a cool design choice as well because it keeps the camera from looking like a giant brick. The A2E uses a 2CR5 battery, something that was common in the 1990s and a go-to battery for many cameras. Today, however, a 2CR5 can be a little tough to find and it will run you somewhere around $20. Add to this the cost of the film, 15 bucks each around, and the cost of negatives, developing two rolls of film, roughly $20 each, and it cost me almost $100 to shoot the two rolls of films for this video. This is why I didn't test the high speed <laughs> continuous on the camera. Canon A2E is a great camera for the era. For the 1990s, it is feature packed and versatile and quite a great camera for film shooters. Now for me, using the camera is an exercise in nostalgia and fun. Although after dusting off my A2E, I think I'm gonna use it more often. The question is whether or whether or not I should invest in a film scanner and do more of my own developing. And we all know that this can be fun, but also extremely time consuming and expensive. So I'm not sure I'm there yet. Overall, the camera is really cool for something that's almost 30 years old. And it is amazing to me that Canon was able to pack all of this technology into a camera that many years ago, especially as the eye control focus is seeing a resurgence now in the R3 series cameras. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and this retrospective on what is one of my favorite cameras from the past. Don't forget to gently press that like button. There is no need to smash it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and go out and take some awesome pictures and have a great day, everyone. I will see you next time. Peace. <music>